Hey, Trey Veston here, headed out to the range to do another uh, range session. That was a bit redundant. Anyway, we're going to be shooting uh, a pistol today that I did not purchase. I did not inherit. Inher inherit? Inherit. Inherit. That's a weird word. Anyway, a shot of the beautiful countryside of Washington going into Idaho. It is a somewhat... Winnie the Pooh day, a bit blustery, and but we're only going to be shooting uh, pistols at 25 yards max, doing a little defensive shooting, and this pistol is one that's unique because uh, I didn't buy it. It was uh, a relative of mine purchased it for his significant other, and he has just had not enough time to properly evaluate the, the pistol or shoot it, so he gave it to me kind of as is, uh, it's already been unboxed. I know very little about it. He gave me a bag of ammo. He has not disclosed what type of ammo it is. Um, it looks like there's some blazers mixed in there. It's all nine millimeters, so I'm gonna shoot it. It's a Ruger Max 9, and it came equipped from the factory with the Crimson Trace. I think it's the DT1550 Optic, I believe. Um, looked it up on Amazon and it retails for approximately a hundred, oh, what was it? 116 bucks, which seems like pretty, pretty cheap for an optic from a, uh, a name brand. So, alrighty, I'm pulling up to Highway 95 here. And it's a, uh, busy Sunday. Okay. We can edit all this out in post-production, which is what us YouTubers like to call when we snip out all the embarrassing things. All right, I need to do another video on this, uh, this Tundra. I've been doing some mods on it. It's freaking awesome. Sounds great. All righty, so back to the pistol. It's a Ruger Max 9. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it, do some close ups. Fit and finish is on par for Ruger lately, which is about Taurus level. I know a lot of Ruger purists really get upset, but that's reality. Ruger semi autos just are not, they don't have good fit and finish. They're, they work. Uh, usually, and if they don't, Ruger is more than happy to take care of you. I, anyway, what we're going to do today is shoot it side by side with my P365 and a Glock 19, do some accuracy testing, because nobody on the internet does accuracy testing of these little pistols. Nobody shoots micro nines at 25 yards except me, and I demand two inches or better with uh, reloads custom tailored reloads so let's get to it we're almost to the ranch so let's uh stop jabbering and start shooting okay let's take a look at this thing let's clear it first let's clear move the magazine slide release Ooh, a little tight uh, it's got a safety. White means safety's engaged. Tiny red, and you can't really see. Okay, positive on and off. A little small for a safety, but whatever. Uh, factory night sight and fiber optic. So we're good to go there. Okay, Crimson Trace. It says it is a 3MOA. You can see that. Probably not. Let's see if we can't get some light on the situation here. The old range. There we go. That's much better. Okay, and a warning. Pistol will fire with magazine removed. Okay, we've cleared it. Trigger. A little bit of take up. Not too mushy. Not bad. Okay, let's see what the old uh, trigger gauge says. Okay. Okay. 
Trigger gauge says right at four pounds. Wow, not bad at all. Of course, that is right on the very tip. Just the tip. That's what she said. Um, oh, right at just under four pounds. Try that again. That's pretty impressive. And let's see if we can get it towards the middle. Maybe that might be more accurate. Come on, Cletus. Okay. We're exceeding four. Oh, all the way up to six pounds. And that's right on the, the middle. Let's see if we can do it this way. Get a better angle. Okay. So the middle. And that's just under five and a half pounds. And I think the inconsistency is just simply where I'm, I'm placing the polar. Let's try and get it a little bit more consistent here. Yeah, five and a half. Okay, it's not bad. Let's uh, compare that to a G19. Clear that. Magazine clear. Okay. We'll get that right at the similar area and And we're right at five and a half for that one. Yeah, five and a quarter. And the trigger on this, there's a little take up. Little, little, yeah, a little creep and then mush, yeah. The Ruger trigger feels way better than a G19 trigger. And I think this trigger is pretty much stock. Um, come on, let's get another pull for our three pulls. And yeah, five and a quarter. So not bad for block trigger. Um, but still, not a great trigger, you know, typical Glocks. And the P365, the current carry pistol. And this one is my carry configuration. Clear that. Okay, safety off. And no trigger safety on this, so we can get it right perfectly in the middle if we'd like. And we are pulling over five, five and a half. Oh, six and a half. That's not bueno. And there's like hardly any. Well, there's there's okay, there's take up and then the creep. Not much creep at all, and then it's crisp, but it doesn't feel like six and a half pounds. Yeah, let's try again. Okay, let's write at six pounds on that one. Make sure we're in the consistently the same spot. And six and a quarter. Well, yeah, six and a quarter, six pounds, but it doesn't feel that bad at all. Whereas the Ruger, it's got a lot more take up. And once you hit the wall, it's a little gritty and a lot of grit and a lot of mush. Yeah. Okay. I think the Ruger we established has the lightest. Um, but this one feels the best. Okay. Alrighty. Taking a look at the trigger poles. A holster. Let's take a look at these magazines. We've got the two. Now, this is how the gun was presented to me. I don't have the original carrying case or manual, so I don't know. From I've watched a couple of videos and it looks like this is an optional thing. It's usually there's a flat base plate for the magazine. Um, this holds 10 rounds. They say this one holds 12, but I think when I was loading it up last night, I only got 11 in, into it. So we'll take a look at that. And uh, let's see what else. When we were doing the size comparison, we saw that this was the the purchase area on the front of these. 
pistols are all about the same. Uh, the Sig Sauer will hold 12 with the same overall. And the Glock 19 will hold 15 with the same overall height and grip, grip size. So uh, this Crimson Trace, it's got a cover on. The cover actually turns off the red dot. Take the cover off for carry, red dot's automatically on. Let's see if you can see that. Oops, bumping the thing. Can you see the, where's the laser? Okay, I don't, oh, there it is, okay. Three MOA dot, should be just fine, and it's auto, auto adjusting for brightness. It's not a bad little carry red dot. I think it's better than the, uh, than the Vortex, what have I got on this now, Burris Fast Fire 3? Yeah, the Burris Fast Fire 3 on this. Um, let's see if we turn it on, you got to hold it down. Come on, turn on, there it goes. And I think the astigmatism on this one, for my eyes, it's a little bit more drastic. This is also a 3 MOA dot, if I recall correctly. And you can't co-witness with these sights, with the Fast Fire, the Burris. But you can with the Ruger, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. And the way the, the red dot's already perfectly matched to the, uh, the sights. So we'll see how it shoots. Alrighty. And this is the bag of ammo <laughs> that my relative supplied. He said, I'll give you a Ziploc baggie full of nine mil and just shoot it and see how it does and get it broke in and see if there's any issues. So anybody want to guess how many bullets are in this bag of ammo? I don't know. I haven't counted, but I will. And I'll let you know. <laughs> See how close you can get to, to guessing that. So, alrighty, the ammo. So we don't know the bullet weight. I'm assuming 115 grain. Uh, stamp on these. What is that? Spear 9mm Luger. Spear ammo. And then I think I saw some blazers. Blazer aluminum mixed in. Yeah, CCI blazers. Also looks like 115. Full metal jacket. No hollow points in the mix, and I think all the uh, the brass ones are all, let's see. Oh, we got some blazer brass. We got some uh, federal and spear. So we've got accuracy tests might not be uh, all that accurate. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's windy. All righty. At the target, everything's green and beautiful except it's windy as heck. Okay, the Ruger, six and a quarter inches, five shot group at 25 yards using random ammo. The original 12 shots we did came in at nine and five eighths and that was just getting the red dot adjusted. So I tightened that up a little bit, but no, no malfunctions. The Glock, the most accurate pistol, uh, five and a quarter with the target blowing around in the wind. And the SIG was the worst at seven inches and the only one without a red dot. So, yeah, there you go. Um, red dots definitely help. I uh, was surprised that the Glock only did five and a quarter. Uh, so the Ruger's not bad. It's, it's in the ballpark. It's at, at 25 yards with not ideal ammo. Uh, I'd say that's perfectly acceptable. So, alrighty, next, let's uh, see how fast we can shoot each pistol and uh, see how the accuracy is, just point shooting, see how they feel, alrighty. Okay, we're just gonna, because we don't have holsters for all these, we're gonna start at low ready. Fire five rounds as fast as possible. First up, six hour P365. And we'll just see how accurate they are and how fast we can do the, the five rounds. Just to kind of get a feel for how they do. So alrighty. Low ready. Five rounds. Yeah. Not bad. 
clear. Next up, our uh, Ruger Max 9. Now we're not using the sights, we're just kind of bringing it up and shooting both eyes open. Go for the, the right above the six, throw a headshot, five rounds. Low ready. <laughs> it's so windy. <laughs> okay, let's try the Glock. I don't know how much of that was erased. Okay, now the Taurus, we've got, we didn't hit anywhere near the head. It's all what's to the left. Uh, Glock, low ready. The camera's going to get blown over. Uh, we'll go for the right shoulder area. Their left shoulder, my right shoulder. Okay, and I, I still shot to the left, huh, interesting, I think we're going to have to use the sights, we'll slow down a little more, we got plenty of ammo left, okay, they're thinking this time, we're going to fire low ready, this time we're going to do barely aimed fire. We're going to get a sight picture first. You get this bird. We get a sight picture first. Then we'll squeeze off our five rounds as fast as we can, and we'll we'll review the video later. We'll take a look at how much the muzzle flip there is, how much we're moving around. It's been raining. The wind is gusting worse. Tornado over there, I think. So let's just get this done and see how they compare. Alrighty. First up, the con my concealed carry pistol P365, my beautiful little gem. Low carry and we'll shoot. Now uh, we'll do the, uh, the lower left. Okay. Alrighty. There we go. Nice little group. So I carry this thing. This feels good. Points naturally for me. Okay, next pistol up. With the red dot. The Ruger Max 9. And we're going to go for the headshot on the Max 9. Okay, and let's... It's hard chasing that red dot. I'm not used to shooting with the red dot. The pistol seems to jump more. It seems to, it's not as pointable for me. And it feels like it's jumping around and the red dot disappears right away. I don't know, maybe it's my grip. I don't have a lot of formal training or if I did, it was decades ago in the academy, so. Alrighty, next up, our Glock 19. With the Burris Fast Fire 3. And we're going to the middle right. Okay. Alrighty. That Glock 19 felt obviously more controlled. Got a lot, a lot bigger handgun. Red dot. It seemed to point more natural to me. Which, if I'm not carrying the P365, I'm carrying a Gen 3 G23 because they just feel great. So let's take a look at those groups and we'll review the video and see which is the best for, I guess, just shooting up close and fast. Okay. First up is my preferred carry pistol. That was the, uh, the SIG. And we got a two and a quarter inch group that, no oh wait, you know, I just, I saw a flyer. Hold the presses. Okay, that opened it up to a five inch, not two and a quarter. So five inches, not bad. Shot a little to the left. Next up, we did the Ruger. 
came in at eight inches uh, but it was mostly centered not too bad a little low but that's with the the red dot and then the g19 was seven inches and centered but low also with the red dot so interesting the two red dot targets are similar in group sizes one's more uh, horizontal one's more vertical seven inches eight inches um, point uh, the little sig best group five inches uh, a little to the left but yeah that's and i'm stupidly fast shooting at metal rods so i'm getting spatter coming back you can see that one too but Alrighty, so the Ruger is, uh, it's not a bad little pistol. No pistols malfunctioned, and now it's sunny and beautiful out. <laughs> yeah, weather changes constantly out here, and it'll be raining here in another few minutes and then snowing, so anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. All right, Trey Vestin, uh, I think we can conclude that the Ruger is a good little pistol, and I want to mention that the fit and finish on it, I looked at one when they, they first came out, and it already had some some uh, chips in the finish on the, the counter, the, the counter display model, and so I was not very impressed. This one has um, the fit and finish. It, it's better. There were no deficiencies. Uh, it's still not as nice as the the sig or the the glock but i think for under 400 bucks and it comes with an optic minus that 116 dollar optic you're looking at you know taurus level prices with a little higher than taurus level quality so yeah i think uh this little pistol be a a good little carry gun for someone and uh yeah i'm gonna i wanted to shoot some of my rifles but the weather's so bad the wind's so bad there's no point in trying to shoot at 100 yards today so alrighty hope everybody's enjoying better weather than we are out here and uh Trey Vestin out